All right, so I'm going to go split screen here. Just to kind of see what we're working with so I can use something on the right to design off. And for those of you, there's a couple of you out there too that said that you want to start your own business building websites. Um, I'm going to try to cater to you as well. I'm trying to cater to everyone right now, so it's a little, <laughs> a little jumbled. Um, so bear with me. But when you're making your own website, or if you're designing off of something you want to take inspiration from, I like to do a split screen like this. There's a couple of programs out there. This, this one called Magnet, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's like a dollar on the App Store. And you can like snap things left and right. I know Windows does that already, so that's pretty cool. But for Mac users, I recommend Magnet. You can split it left and right, top and bottom, thirds, whatever. Cool. So we have, this is, this is what we're going to try to build right now. And I'm going to blast through this, so bear with me. Cool, let's build it. So first we have this intro thing. Um, you'll notice when the page does load, I have this fancy effect. You can see it almost did it. Yeah, there it is. It like fades in as you scroll to it. That's an advanced kind of thing. I'm not gonna touch that. I'm just gonna put the basic content there. All right, cool. So what do I have? I have one phrase that says, hi, I'm Nick. So I'm gonna type in, and as you see, it always starts with a text block. If I didn't have that, I would add it through this. This is an important concept. How to add content on your web page. On Squarespace, you'll see these little teardrop icons pop up. You're going to click that, and it'll pull up all the different things that you can add onto your web page. Zoom in. So you can add text. Markdown is, is like a special language you can use to format things easily. Don't worry about that. A quote, is, which is great. Image, video, a spacer to add space vertical or horizontal. A line to break things up. A button. Um, I use these a lot. Audio, right? This is for the musicians out there, the podcasters. Um, or maybe you just want to add your favorite song to your website. Embed, don't worry about that. Image layouts. This is pretty cool. When you add an image, you can... You can now layer text over the top of it as a poster, to the right of it as a card with like a background color. You can overlap it and also make a background color. Um, these are really nice ways to make elegant looking sites um, easily. A collage and stack. Gallery, music, or uh, photographers, this is you, and other people too. You can make a slideshow. You can make a carousel where it's like sliding through each image automatically. A grid that you set the grid uh, width and height and you can also crop the images as well and a stack which is just the whole image stacked on top of each other summary block these are really cool they're a little advanced concepts which we're going to talk about after we do blogs um but we'll, yeah we'll come back to those and then more stuff a form right when you filled out that form to do the the webinar today that's how i made that with this um newsletter a map location map your calendar this is for weddings. If you're making a wedding website, I use this for my wedding. It was awesome. It's like a registry thing. Um, and Bands in Town, that's for the musicians out there. It's a great app if you don't have it yet. You can add a search box. You can add uh, clouds. For, your, for those selling products out there, this is how you would add a product to the homepage of a page that already exists with your product. So I'm not going to get ahead of myself. But you can, it's it's crazy all the stuff you can make on Squarespace really easily, like bar charts and line charts and pie charts. Are you kidding me? It's awesome. And then all your social media blocks. We're going to connect our social media soon. And uh, this is how you pull those filters or those like feeds up. All right. Okay. I'll zoom back out. And okay. We're going to add a text block. It was already there, but I want to show you how to add it. Deleting a block is as simple as clicking the trash icon. All right, so we're going to type in, hi. Okay, so this is a just normal text. There's different, this is like a text editor. If you use um, Word, then you're probably, you probably know everything that's up here. Except for this. This changes the, the size and the dimension of the text itself. There's different heading levels. You can see heading one is the biggest one. Heading two is the second biggest. Heading three is the third biggest. There's a quote and then code. You're going to use these mostly, these four. Heading one, you should, a basic um, web design, web development thing is to only use one heading one per page. I've seen people that use like only heading ones everywhere. 
and it confuses the hell out of Google. Google looks for that heading one and what is in there. So when it comes to search engine optimization, which is a whole other topic I'm not going to get into, um, right? You want to pop to the top of Google. It comes from a lot of different places, but there's like a hierarchy of what Google looks for first. First, they look for the site title, right? That's the most important. And then they look for the description of the site. There's stuff called metadata, which is hidden text on the page that you can add that talks to robots that <laughs> like scan through your site. And you can add those keywords that you want to pop up for in there. But the keywords, you want to put those in heading ones. Like if you want to show up for like best photographer in LA, you should probably put the word photographer as a heading one a lot, but don't overkill. If you put too many heading ones, um, H1 headings, you can, uh, Google actually like downgrade your site and be like, this site sucks. So don't do that. Heading two, use those not liberally, but you can use them a little bit more than heading ones. And heading threes are like, like sub sections. So I'm gonna call this a heading one because it's the only text I have on my page. Now you can see on the right hand side, I have this aligned to the right. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna align this to the right. You're gonna see that it doesn't really move very far because the, the current settings of the site have like this big container around the, the text. So the way I'm gonna fix that is by adding a spacer. I'm gonna add this spacer here. And then this is another important concept is how do you move content around the page? What you do is say, I wanna move this block to the left of Hi Nick. Hi, Nick. I click and hold the spacer, and then I'm going to drag it around. And then you see that line that pops up. Um, that's going to that shows you where it's going to land. So if I put it here, this whole spacer is going to going to uh, sit on the width of this entire container. I'll drop it there so you can see. But like I said, there's there's like padding going on on the design, which we're going to fix later. Uh, that makes it just small like this. But if I want to put it to the left of this, I drop it right there. If I put it here, it's below. Here, it's above. Here, it's to the right. Here, when, the, when that gray box pop, pops up, that makes the text wrap around whatever block that is. So I'm going to drop it right there. And now you can see this template is set up in a way that if you have multiple blocks that aren't just in the middle of the page, you can span the whole container. Otherwise, it wraps it in the middle then I can change the size. So if you hover over the middle of a block that's connecting each other, um, I can drag it to the left, I can drag it to the right. Pretty cool. So I'll put it right there, that's about right. Forgot a period. Cool. Now I'll save and boom, <laughs> we're getting close, kind of. Now, I have this image, how do I add the image? Well, from the home page. I'm going to click on the page that I want to edit, which is welcome. We're already there. Then I hover over, and you'll see that these different options pop up. If I want to edit like I was just doing, I click edit, and that brings me into the content editor. If I want to add an image, I click banner. There's two ways to do it. You can either click banner, or you can hover over the gear icon. Click that, and it brings up the same like settings of the page. So I go from here, the top right corner, there's media. I click media, and that's where it brings up a thumbnail image banner thumbnail image. I click add an image and it brings me to my computer. I have a handy dandy little folder set up for this thing. So I'm going to preview this. Yep, that's the picture I want. I don't know why I went with light bulbs. I thought it was cool. All right, it uploads the picture. Okay, cool. It's ready to go. What I want to talk about though is this focal point. Um, the focal point is important because when I'm on, when I'm looking on a, on a phone, right, it's going to crop out everything that's not within the width of that phone. The phones are like 600 pixels wide. Um, so like if I had the focal point right here, you wouldn't see that picture at, at all. If I had it right here, you'd probably see the edge of it, which is, I think is how I have it set up. Cause I wanted people to see the edge of the, the light, the light but also have it to the left so that my text lines up right here. So I'm gonna put the focal point right there. And that goes for any picture on Squarespace. You can set the focal point on any image like that. All right, saved it, but it didn't show up, so let's refresh. Okay, cool, there's the picture, it's there. I want it to be a little bit wider though. So I'm gonna click edit, and what I'm gonna do is, because as you can see, it's only as wide as the content that I have here. So 
I'm going to hover over there. You can see all these different teardrops. You can see that if I clicked here, this content's going to go only below that spacer. If I click here, it's going to go all the way across the whole bottom and, and the top of it. That's what I want to do. I want to click that, add a spacer. I'm going to click the bottom one. And I'm going to add a spacer there as well. So that gives me some padding on the top and bottom that I can drag the size of the spacer out. Try to keep it even. There we go. Cool. We're getting there, right? Uh